none other ways, especially part one, the part that comes from Mrs. Burns' dictionary of unusual, obscure, preposterous words. Ideally, I would uh, have my grandfather's water type up here, and uh, get into my FM voice, smoking uh, the good stuff. But without doing that, I'll just read this slowly. I saxify the basortic minims of my genarch, detenerated by madstone, stounded, hispocine, mabiform, drowsing themselves to the megas, cryptography as a deolation, looping for the ways is bleak. And since uh, we're not formal, I can, I can explain some of this stuff as we go along to put it in the footnotes, but you can find the words in the first two lines here. Saxify is like petrified, turn into stone. Desordic is remedial. A minimum is the least amount of anything. The genarch is the head of the clan, gender unspecified. So, patriarch or matriarch, you can say genarch. Detenebrate is to bring in from the shadow. Madstone is an amulet worn around the neck to ward off insanity. Stounded is a variant on astounded. Histrocyne is porcupinish. And new perform is in the shape of a turnip. To drows is what happens with a candle when the wind hits it and it starts to uh, relax all over the sides. Uh, Negus could be the King of Ethiopia or it could be a wine concoction. Uh, Stephrographia is mirror writing. Deobation is hair bleaching. To loop is to put dialogue over animation or to um, I guess when they, they do uh, English dubbing of foreign language, that's also called dubbing. And Anguinius Fisgig is a snake like flirt. So, I saxify the desordic minims of my genarch, detenebrated by Madstone. Stound did his design may perform drowsing themselves through the negus stripography as a deolation looking for an Anguinius Fisgig. Angustate proceeds accumulating for the ancipital. That dominal consarsimation to the stellate to say in the Macau of Nicodemia, who Potswalana and Tatages and follow cryptic and building, commanded up smathing in the super septuagenarian Nasser of Teletic flocks, flocks supplying across the torturers of Sintosis contributors to his guest, who Barnumized their harassers to heat with free and under the electrolyte and saxified one else on the top, slipping on the Nesmic Rovex from our subject. Who pavas through Upongos with radio wisdom, co eradicate ice, falsity, mercury, and laughter from literophobia, Shragamascalia among the tricks of Mormon, who are expostated from the Akal Cuneus for Crenula and fixing of sitting odiums on the windows of the Scout City, who crepitated in unsancy of ropes and undenism, busking their money scrivener in water and ships and lopping the attrition through the water. That calcium and narcotic betalites, revalorizing through lorries and phenotics with the belt of the very lofty for new market humor. Who advertised Perkin and Pisagani hot spurs or drumble turpitude and paragon militia to Calcomania, or pericued their torque calls, nicking after nicking the drumble manias with drones, with warming metalometers, Alcaranus to Cockablue and in Dogmas Ball leaders. Incondit listen to as a scintillating cloth and laps of food in the mineral land by an orthodoxies of canyon pathogenosis, and it goes on for many pages like that. Seven pages like that. Well, not that our population is greatly increased, but look at how we're going with the, the real show now. Welcome to the Astrological month of Virgo. The moon itself is in Virgo, as well as the sun, which means that we've got a, a new moon tonight. Isn't that what that means? Yeah. Okay. At 4:59. Right. Um, in the year 79, Pliny the Elder, the Roman writer, dies in eruption of Mount Vesuvius. He had deliberately approached the eruptive volcano in order to study it. And apparently it died from inhaling poisonous fumes. Which leads me directly into our literary book here because uh, we've got this fantastic painting. The, fuck? the Death of Chatterton. Yeah. 
give it to that. I'm going to count on you, Al, when we have the question and answer session. Um, rather than starve to death, in 1770, Thomas Chatterton takes arsenic in his London garret and dies at 17. Although Horace Walpole characterized the author of pseudo 15th century poems attributed to Thomas Rowley, a priest, as a complete genius and complete rogue, who will become a symbol of native genius of the Romantics, Wordworth, Keats, Shelley, Coleridge, even Poe. And it says here about the, the painting itself Henry Walls is the death of Chatterton, 1855. Employed the young George Meredith as the model for the tragic poet and figured in the famous Victorian literary scandal of Meredith's wife, Mary Ellen, daughter of Thomas Love Peacock, shortly thereafter, Mary Ralph Wallace, the painter. In 1456, the printing of the Gutenberg Bible was completed in Mainz. In 1591, Robert Herrick, poet, author of Gabby Roosevelt's Bloody May, was baptized in London. In 1847, Charlotte Bronte dispatches Jane Eyre to the publishing house of Smith Elder, accompanying the pseudonym of Kerr Bell. In 1892, two weeks before his death, John Greenleaf Whittier writes his last poem. Tribute to Oliver Wendell Holmes, five days before Holmes' 83rd birthday. 1899, Jorge Luis Borges, born in Buenos Aires. 1922, Virginia Woolf writes Lytton Strachey after reading the first six chapters of James Joyce's Ulysses, Never have I read such tosh. <laughs> of course, genius may blaze up on day 652, but I have my doubts. <laughs> Uh, it's also Max Beerbaum's birthday, Malcolm Cowley, Cowley and Rene Levesque. Uh, 1944, French troops liberated Paris. 1965, 58 U.S. servicemen returning to Vietnam are killed when their transport plane crashes into Hong Kong Harbor. And in 1970, the first UFW lettuce boycott begins. Who's there? Gary, do you want to wait? Yeah, I can wait a bit. More people? Sure. So I can go up and go about it. Yeah, go for it. In fact, the way things are going, I'm, I'm even willing to wait until after the main reading. That's me. <laughs> Either way. You, might get, have to you know something? You might as well get started. Get started on the feature with no open readings at all? Well. Unless somebody wants to go home. I love that. Hey, nice to Thanks. Thank you. I mean, one bad. What we're dealing with here is... Good night, boy. Yeah? Are you going to have to late tonight? Yeah. Nine years? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, proposition the waitress tonight? Is this the bad proposition the waitress? <laughs> it could not be. How you doing, Blue? I'm doing good. Is this the bad waitress proposition to me? Find your best bit. Yeah. Okay, binaural sound and technical. Well, this yes. is not a poetic tragedy that's introduced in this room. Okay. Would anybody like to hear my brother in law's mistranslation of the Raven? Yeah. He does. Who's your brother in law? Brother in law is Carol Carl Perra. He's in town tonight, but he's not here. He uh, usually resides in Vancouver. I need some water for this. Thank you. 